Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make things. Today I'm going to show you how I made this awesome Imperial Star Destroyer and then crashed it into a tropical paradise. You can find about a million and one different variations of Star Destroyers online. I found this one in SketchUp, which let me separate it into the major components, which I then was able to print out on a single piece of paper. Once I had it printed out, I carefully went through and cut out each of the individual pieces, which then I will separate and glue onto just a sheet of plastic card. Once I've got them all glued onto the plastic card, I can go through and cut them out again. This will give me the proper thickness for all the components and it'll be a lot more sturdy than if I were to use something like cardboard or cardstock. Um, it'll also take paint a lot more easily than having to worry about bleeding through on just some plain paper. I can go through afterwards and finesse all the details, so cut out the little ridges on the side. Um, and then I'll start to work on attaching the parts together. First though, because it's got a bit of a curve to it, I'll cut the back of the top part and then using my groove, um, I will slice out the middle so that I can stick the two parts together. I can go back through and cut the top so that it bends and then some super glue down the middle will hold it in place at sort of a, a specific degree. I just wanted to make sure that it had a slant to it. Then it's just a case of cutting out each of the pieces on top and then gluing the appropriate piece in place. It's fairly straightforward if you leave the sections on so that you know what to cut out and what goes where. It's basically like building a puzzle. Once all the pieces are in place, I'll go back through and take out some of the leftover glue. I wanted to use lots of glue because there were a lot of small pieces and I didn't want them popping off while I was trying to do everything. So there's going to be a lot of excess glue. It's easy enough to chop away once it's dried. And then I went back through and took out all of the leftover paper. With that done, to attach the bottom to the top, I wanted to make sure that there was a bit of a spacer in between the two. So I've cut a couple thin strips of plastic card and then carved them or curved them, sorry, at the tip so that they'll join in the middle. Then it's another bead of glue along the bottom and then I can attach the top and the bottom together and I've got the general shape that I'm after. To attach the tower, I didn't really have a printout for it so it was a lot of just guessing and checking. It ended up being a bit taller than I had hoped for but apparently it fits in with the Rebel Star Destroyer versus the uh, Imperial version. To make the sort of bridge, it was just two pieces cut down the middle they get glued together and then they'll get glued onto the tip of the tower. The engines are just going to be a couple pieces of dowel that I've chopped down and then using some more super glue, I'll stick those right into the middle, basically getting them where I want them to be, making sure they're spaced out properly and then I can come back through with my scalpel, some sandpaper, a couple different tools just to make sure they're all the appropriate length. To fill in all the gaps, I mixed up a little bit of green stuff. You can absolutely use something like super glue or just a bit of foam, anything you have on hand to fill in the gaps. It's just getting all these spots that I used the scalpel to cut so that I could bend the plastic. I just want to make sure that they're all filled in. I will also use a bit of the green stuff as I'm moving along to highlight a couple of these areas that were missing parts. So the gun batteries along the side were just a couple small circles of green stuff which I rolled out and then using my shapers pressed into place. So once I've got all four on each side, I'll come back through with my scalpel just to give them the right shape and a little bit of texture as well. I'm not overly concerned about screwing anything up in terms of sort of proper dimensions because I'm gonna smash the thing to pieces anyways. To make the little round tower things on top, a couple pieces of wire glued into holes and then a couple balls of green stuff on top will make the shield batteries. To fill in all the gaps around the engines, I used a little bit of green stuff which was a bit too tricky to press in properly. So I mixed up a little Magisculpt which is basically the same as green stuff but it's got sort of a 
almost a grainier consistency, so it's a little easier to press into places. It's not quite as sticky, so it doesn't stick to wires and that sort of stuff, but it's great for filling gaps. I always made a couple little balls, which I'll press down for the, I guess they're auxiliary engines. I don't know specifically, but the Star Wars community is pretty forgiving as far as screwing up the titles of things. So uh, hopefully you don't, you know, crucify me for this. Um, to make the engines, I used a couple little balls on the tip of the dowel. And then using my metal rod, I pressed the shape of the engine into those. The last step for the ship itself was to add the various little cuts and creases and little bits into the top of the ship. I'm sure that there is a specific way that they're supposed to be laid out, and I'll probably get in trouble for this in the comments, but I just kind of went wild with it and started cutting it in. It, again, it's going to be all smashed up, so no one's really going to notice. And it's made out of plastic. I mean, if it needed to be perfect, you could always get a model something like that. Once it's spray painted and primed, it's looking pretty sharp, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. To make the base, I had some leftover pieces of MDF that are painted, which doesn't matter because we're going to cover it in rocks from the garden. I found some rocks that had kind of an interesting look to them. I wanted to make it like a, an archipelago, sort of in the shape of what you might see in Vietnam. Um, or any of the tropical areas. So I wanted some really cool looking rocks to build the islands out of. I was also trying to figure out kind of the layout before I started to attach everything because I'm gonna start attaching everything just using a bit of plaster. So we'll mix up a fairly thick batch of plaster which will go over the entire surface the blue on the bottom was just a leftover project that I was working on, so I'll repaint the entire thing. But the blaster will serve two parts. It will act as the base of the ocean, and it's also what's going to hold all my rocks in place. So this is where I'm trying to decide really where I like it, which sides of these rocks have the best look to them and the best texture, and then trying to figure out how I want to lay them out. You're not limited in the size of the rocks. You can always add a little plaster into the middle to join rocks, layer them on top of one another, so I take a big blob and then add a rock onto the top of it, which will sort of be the main island. And then all the little offshoots will have a little bit of plaster, maybe a couple attachments here and there. As it's starting to dry and it hasn't dried entirely, I'll come through with my sculpting tools and smooth out some of the sections where the water will be and then scuff up a bit around the shore so that it's not quite so smooth and flat looking around the bottom of the rocks. Then it's deciding where I want to put the Star Destroyer. Trying to set it in place, get a general idea of where it's going to be. Once I've found a spot that I think actually looks good for it, I'll take my scalpel and score where the break is going to be. So I want to cut the ship in half. I'm just going to really go at it sort of haphazardly. Um, I want to make sure that I can snap it in half and it looks like it's been ripped apart. When I'm happy with the placement, then I need to start filling in the gap. Because we built it hollow, we need to make sure that it looks like there are parts inside. So a little bit of balsa wood, a little bit of CA glue, super glue to fill in the gap, and then I'll just cram some more into the tip of each of them. Do this on both sides. Make sure that it, uh, it really looks like it's been ripped in half, maybe on landing or it was breaking apart as it was entering the atmosphere. Then I want to also go through and add some battle damage to it, so I'll take my pliers and just start cutting parts out of it. Take the scalpel, cut some large grooves into it where something either blew up or hit it or, I don't know, just battle damage essentially. Do whatever you want along here, just make sure it looks uh, wrecked and cool. I also snapped the nose of the nose off, I guess and then placed it in where I thought it would look the best. Once I was happy with that, it was time to get down to the painting. This was a pretty quick process. There's only really two or three colors in this, so a nice blue, start dark in the middle, and then go a little bit lighter out to the edges. That'll act as the base of our little ocean. And then back through to paint the rocks in sort of a uniform brown. Um, it probably would have been a really good idea to prime these rocks, but uh, hindsight being what it is, um, it didn't really cause me any problems at the end of it. A little bit of chips here and there, but it was actually the plaster that started to chip more than anything. 
So some green highlights along all the rocks that will show me where the foliage will go. And then it's just a case of going over the entire thing. The Star Destroyer is actually really easy to paint because it's just a big gray triangular ship. Um, what I do want to do is go over the entire thing and I highlight uh, all those gaps. So I'll take a dark wash and go through the entire top coat and then go through with some thinned out black to add sort of scarring along where the explosions would be to make it look like um, maybe it landed and caught fire. So there's some burn marks, some scoring all along there. And then the last step will be to come back through with a ochre and brown wash, and then that'll add sort of that rusted effect to it. I find it works really well if you put it on thick and then take off the excess using just a Q-tip or a towel. The final step as far as the island itself is concerned is adding all the foliage. This will just be some simple foam flock on top. So I'll use Mod Podge to cover the tops of everything and then sprinkle on wherever you want it to go. I don't want to coat the entire thing, I just want to make sure that the tops will be covered. And I really put it on thick. This is going to act as sort of the canopy, the tree cover over the entire thing, because I really want to maintain that scale. I think that it actually turned out really good. It does look like tiny little trees covering all these little islands. The only thing I wasn't sure about was, was it a bit too much green? But I was using some of the photos of the archipelagos in Vietnam, and I found that generally there's just two colors. There's green and there's the brown of the rock. So adding a lot of color in actually started to make it look a little bit silly. The last step then is to add in our actual smashed Star Destroyer. So pick where it was going to go. Use a little of super glue just to hold it in place. And this is just to keep it from rising up while the resin is applied. For the aforementioned resin, I'll use the same silicone mold that I've used in the vast majority of my videos. Um, I made it during the floating island and I continue to use it in a lot of my other videos as well. This was a bit of a tricky pour just because I wanted to make sure that I didn't get it on the body of the ship or on any of the trees because I don't want them to soak it up. It probably would have been a good idea to add the flocking after the resin was done, but again, hindsight being what it is, not much I can do about it at this point. Final stages for the water prep are to add a high gloss Mod Podge all around the edge of it. Same process I use in most of my videos, a little bit of Mod Podge, fairly thick, and then a straw to give it sort of a realistic wavy look to it. Turns out really well and looks really cool. A couple hours later, you'll see that the Mod Podge has dried clear. And if you move it so it reflects the light, you can really see those waves in there. Normally, I'd like the waves to be a bit more pronounced, but given the scale of this, I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of white paint to highlight where the waves would be breaking on the surface of the ship and around the edges of the rocks. Again, I'd like to make them bigger, but it's a bit tricky to sort of give the waves any actual depth on something this small. I mean, I think what a Star Destroyer is something like almost two kilometers long. So each of those waves, if you make them any bigger, are going to start to look really strange when you stop and think about it. The paint fortunately works really well to add a little bit of depth to the water and it gives it a little bit more realistic look. To finalize the trees on top, I went back through with just a couple different colors. I wanted to add a little bit of darker green to it to sort of highlight some different colors. And then I'll go back through with sort of a brownish green just to give it a bit of depth and variation in the foliage. But with that, we're finished. And that is our smashed Imperial Star Destroyer in a tropical paradise.
As always, if you like the video, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. Doing all these things always helps out as it lets YouTube know that these are videos worth seeing. It also lets me know that these are things that people want me to continue doing. Otherwise, if you liked it and you want to see more, come back next week and we'll do something new. Cheers!